I might have made a mistake. I really don't know. I was strolling around the auction this week and I bought that thing right there. Basically sight unseen. I barely heard it running. It was running through the auction block. It seemed kind of cool. So I ran over and as it was pulling out, I raised my hand and I ended up getting it. I don't know anything about MGBs. I don't know anything about old English cars. All I know is I'm gonna get this thing back to my shop and try to resell it at a different auction in under 24 hours and see if I make money or lose money. No matter what it's gonna sell because the challenge is to get rid of it in under 24 hours. So let's see how we do. So hey everyone, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I own a small car dealership in Danville, New Hampshire, and I buy and sell a little bit of everything. If it makes me smile, I'm into it, and I buy it. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. I really hope today's video is a win and not a total loss. I ended up buying a 1980 MGB convertible with 71,000 supposedly original miles. We'll find out. I know nothing about this car. I don't even know if it's going to start. I was running through the auction and I saw it from afar. I raised my hand. I ended up winning it as it was pulling out. I haven't started this thing. I haven't looked at it. I know nothing about it. So your first time seeing it is going to be my first time seeing it as well. Let's check this car out and see if it's a winner or a loser. Right off the bat, you can tell the trunk is aligned and I think that is the trunk prop. So somebody probably tried to slam the trunk closed with it in locked position, which bent the trunk. The plastic seem in good shape and the body's pretty straight. We get a little bit of rust down there. Tires aren't dry rotted. Has the original MG wheels. This top has seen better days, but it's not ripped. I mean, maybe that's just the way it's supposed to look. Loose and unsupported. Going to the front. I mean, it's kind of cool looking, but again, I don't know anything about these things. Getting closer to the paint, you can see the paint's pretty cracked. So maybe it is the original paint for all I know. It's kind of neat, and I feel like somebody's going to want this thing. It smells like must. It looks like it's been sitting for quite a long time. The vinyl seats are in good shape. So here's the deal. I paid $1,700 for this car. I thought it was a good deal. I don't really know anything. I don't know if it's worth $500 or $5,000. I have no clue. After auction fees, I own it for about $1,950. I'm going to clean it, fix it and try to sell it for a profit. So let's get it back to our shop. Well, I guess first, let's see if it starts, and then let's try to get it back to our shop. That is a hell of a gap between the top and the windshield. You don't want to get stuck in the rain with this top. That's just basically coming straight in at me. 71,000 miles, and it does have an, oh, it's not a five-digit odometer, so maybe that really is the original mile. Is that the original radio? <laughs> Four-speed manual transmission. Let's see if it starts. Oh, we have power. It cranks. It's cranking. Hey, it started. All right, so I did see it run already. I just didn't know if the battery would be dead or what. Looks like actually we have a brand new battery back there and the floors seem pretty solid and it sounds healthy, I think. Let's try to get this thing home. The clutch feels great, but it has no power steering. I don't know if it came with power steering or if it didn't at all. Maybe it's such a little car, it's just supposed to be easy to drive with manual steering. Oh, this is tough to do with one hand. It shifts smoothly and it sounds healthy. So when my father was in college in the 80s, he had a Triumph TR7, which was very similar to this car and he loved that car. So maybe that's the reason I grasped onto this thing because it's so similar to... Now, I've never seen an English car that's dry underneath. This one isn't so bad, though. You know what? I had a weird thought to just go back and check the hood. If, as soon as I took off and got any speed, this thing would have flown straight up in the air. Glad I checked. By the way, look at this little rinky-dink engine. New alternator at least. What is it, a three-cylinder? Wow. No, it's a four-cylinder. Wow. That's a tiny little engine. That was weird. That's not something I ever even think to check, and it just popped in my head. All right, let's get going. Oh, by the way, check out this sweatshirt. 
for sale. You can buy some of our merch, hoodies, long sleeves, tees, hats, you name it. We Link in the description of this video. So after asking trusty old Google some specs and facts about my 1980 MGB, come to find out it has a 1.8 liter four cylinder, which seems larger than that engine looked. That looked like a tiny engine. I thought it came out of a Geo Metro. A whopping 64 horsepower, so that's pretty awesome. Coil springs in the front, leaf springs in the rear, 2,300 pounds. Let me say that again, because I'm gonna go backwards. 64 horsepower. The old 80s Honda Civic hatches had more horsepower than that. Where are you gonna go with 64 horsepower? That thing must not even get out of its own way. But it does beat the 69 Beetle with a 1500cc air-cooled four-cylinder with a whopping 58 horsepower. And now that I'm doing a little bit of research on it, I found out that the MGB had an 18-year long run. It debuted in 1962 where it took over for the MGA. And another thing I found out, unfortunately, according to British folklore, chrome bumpers means British collectible. Plastic bumpers means British junk. Kind of a bummer. And although the MGB had an 18 year long run, it failed in 1980 because it was falling behind the times. So the car wasn't keeping up with its competition like the Datsun T. Those cars were keeping up with modern technology, modern times, whereas the 1980 MGB was still pretty similar to their 1962 model. Come to find out, these cars were slightly overbuilt, and I guess they were pretty durable and rugged, but they had overheating issues and their radiator caps were made of plastic and they would melt. And after reading about it a little bit, it sounds like I got the bottom of the barrel MGB because they had an MGB GT, which came in a two plus two three door coupe. They also had a six cylinder option in the GT. And then they had an MGC, which was a two plus two three door coupe with a V8 option in now, German hasn't seen this car yet, nor does he even know that we're buying it, so let's get his first reaction. If you don't know German, you haven't been watching this channel long enough. A German special. I'm gonna bring this thing back to life. Do you know what it is without seeing it? Yeah, I already, um, I was told already. Oh, Dave spoiled it? You know I haven't told you for freaking three days, and then Dave goes and tells you about it? Ruins the surprise? The guys pointed out something funny on this car that is so narrow that it barely fit on my toe dolly. It has three wipers. What are these? Eight inch wipers probably? 10 inch wipers? Crank it up. Eight inch. Oh. Ooh, it purrs. <laughs> I can't believe you fit it through there. Look at these goofballs. I think I already have it sold because this knucklehead won't get out of it. <laughs> Do we have gas, hopefully? No, we don't have gas? All right, I'll push it with you. There it is. Thanks. That's good. I knew you guys would be excited about this thing. You both dropped everything you're doing just to tackle this car. Probably the cheapest car we have on the lot, and both of you guys are sweating over it. This right here? Best tool we own, Typhoon. I use this on everything to blow all the dirt out of the car before we vacuum it, before we do any other work. These are for sale on my Amazon cart. Link in the description, you can check them out. This loosens up all the dirt. That way when we vacuum, it comes out a little bit easier out of the fabric and we blow most of it out. Before, during, floor mats after. Here's the inside right now, filthy, filthy, gross. Also on my Amazon store, link in the description.
so I was right. The trunk is bent because people were trying to shut the trunk like this. You can see the crease. Instead of doing it the right way, they were just slamming on it. Let's see what we got in the trunk. We got the jack, the spare, some extra parts and springs. I also got this bonnet. I think this goes over the interior when the top is, is down. This what I think it is? A tire tube for a 13-inch tire. That's pretty funny. Well, German and I are about an hour and a half in, probably. This thing was an absolute score. Sometimes when you gamble, you win. Sometimes you lose. I think this was a win. It's coming out so nice. Here's the interior just after a scrub down. The carpets, the seats. Remember how filthy they were just a minute ago? The paint, the wheels, all looks great. We're going to trim black the bumpers, clean the engine bay. Pay attention to what this engine bay looks like now. You do the honors, go ahead. Here's the engine. We're what, two hours, two and a half hours in? Here's what, look at actually the shine off the light right there. It's too bad about the trunk. We have the tonneau cover for the top, we have the top, we have that goes over the entire interior. Oh my goodness, this interior looks incredible. Have you shined it up already? Yeah. Wow. Look at those seats. Door jams. We're going to take care of this trunk a little bit better. We had a little bit of a bubble down there. And a little bit right down there, so we're gonna grind that out and repair it. A little right there too. <laughs> Why do you look so happy? <laughs> the car looks great now. Next morning, I woke up early this morning. I was too excited for this project. Time for some rocket repair. <laughs> Time to bring this bumper back to life. While I was taping off the rear bumper trim, I noticed something pretty cool about this car. Check that out. Matthews Imports, Jacksonville, Florida, British Leland Fiat. This car originally came from Florida, and that badge being on there really makes me think this is the original paint, too. Okay, we have the trunk taped off. I grinded down all the rust down to the metal. It's primed, taped, ready to Here's the trunk. I went with like a fleck textured coating on the floor because it always gets so scratched up. But because the trunk is the original color and in such good shape, I wanted to still keep that English white or that Oxford white. So I left it alone and just textured the floor. Almost done, now the finishing touch. I'm gonna touch up the silver on the wheels. I sanded them down. I'm not gonna paint all the wheels. There's a lot of taping to do. Remember, I'm trying to sell this thing in 24 hours.
here is our finished product just under 24 hours or about 18 hours in next day it's about 11 a.m. and the card is complete and if you remember what it looked like yesterday this is a heck of a difference here's how nice the front bumper came out after some trim paint the wheels are decent we're missing a center cap on that wheel but we touched up the silver so it at least is presentable you can see the rocker panels are all cleaned up too the tires were in good shape we did the rear bumper as well so here's the rear bumper and plate my favorite part and the one I spent the most time on is the trunk here's how the trunk came out and the interior was absolutely disastrous. This is what I was most disappointed in when I first saw the car. And now I'm gonna start with the floor mats just cause look at how nice that floor mat came out. It's white now. The vinyl, all the dirt came out of the vinyl and the vinyl wasn't ripped or anything. All the door pads are in good shape. The dash only has that single crack right there. This car came out, you remember the rust spot? That's all that's left. That's. This car came out really, really nice. Here's the finished product of the engine too. This car was in great shape. It was just filthy. So with a lot of elbow grease and some time and some teamwork, it came out great. Look at how nice the chrome is still. I forgot one last finishing touch, the ashray. Now keep in mind, all repairs are relative to price. We're trying to sell this car in 24 hours or less. And it's also only gonna sell for four to $5,000. We're not talking a $20,000 plus dollar car. So how much you can do in repairs is relative to the price of the car. I could spend $10,000 in this car that doesn't make it worth $10,000. This isn't Counts Customs, this isn't Gas Monkey Garage. I'm selling realistic vehicles at realistic prices. They're affordable. Five grand, you have to keep in mind what you are and are not willing to repair. Otherwise, you could very easily overspend, take way too long on the project, and then make no money at the end. Well, the car is finished. It's about 11 a.m. the next day. I was too anxious and excited last night. I couldn't sleep very well, so I got in the shop early, came in and tried to finish this thing up. I actually haven't even driven it yet. This is the first time I've driven it. And it's just about a little bit faster than a golf cart. But it is kind of fun. I get the idea behind it. It's a cool little car. There's not much to it, and actually with these vinyl like seats are really padded, they're pretty comfortable. All right, so the car really doesn't get out of its own way, but it's still a good time. So you'll see here it's a four-speed manual transmission, and basically first gear is useless. It's a low gear, second gear is your starting gear, and then third gear is your driving gear, and I guess fourth gear is your highway speed. indicator right here so it's finished I bought this car at 3 o'clock yesterday got it back to my shop worked on it till dark couldn't sleep all night because I was excited woke up early got back to my shop worked on it again now let's talk realistically realistically I can't retail sell this thing I can't really put it on Facebook marketplace or Craigslist or wherever else and sell it within 24 hours it's not gonna happen so I'm gonna bring it back to another auction and see if I can wholesale it and see how much I get for it two hours later we did it. Mission accomplished. Success. Full success. I own it for 1970 plus all of our time. Under 24 hours, we ended up wholesaling it at another auction for $4,000. Minus the fees is $3,750. I own it for just under $2,000. So I made about $1,750 off that car in under 24 hours without having to deal with the public, which is the best part. Hey, if this video was at all helpful, entertaining, or just educational, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Make sure to follow us for more videos because we're posting car content all the time. If you guys have any challenges you want me to try out, comment down below. Let me know what you want me to try and see if I can accomplish. I'll see you guys all later. Adios.